Welcome back to Writing Done Right. Well, today I wanted to talk just briefly about some of the recent changes in LibreOffice 7.4. So this is the new version that has just come out. And as most other versions, they will come out with some new functions, some new features. And before we really get into really explaining LibreOffice versus Microsoft Word and people are saying what's compatible and what's not and... You know, only Office is saying we're more compatible and all this kind of stuff. In my personal opinion, using all these things, if you're talking about a non-Microsoft Word application, LibreOffice is more compatible. I have played around with only Office. It is not a bad platform at all. Um, if it's working for you, keep using it. But there are a lot of functions and features that LibreOffice does still have that they do not. Really, the only thing OnlyOffice has is a GUI that looks just like Microsoft Word. Well, the GUI does not define what compatibility is. The problem is, is that Microsoft Office uses a proprietary format that has widely deviated from the open source standard. So um, LibreOffice by default utilizes the open source standard. And this means there's a lot more functions like formatting and multiple page templates and things you do not find inside of Office documents. But with all that being said, if you want to have the maximum compatibility, as I have said before and have done on previous videos on this channel, if you want the maximum compatibility because you're doing a lot of document sharing with people and you use LibreOffice, you need to, number one, set the default document type to the docx format. Number two, you need to make sure that you have the same types of fonts installed on your computer than the people who are receiving. So for example, if you, uh, I use Linux, by default, Linux does not contain the fonts that are found on Windows computers. If I simply install those fonts, which is perfectly legal to do, and put those fonts in my system and I'm making sure I'm using those fonts rather than the default Linux fonts, I'm going to have maximum compatibility. Most incompatibility issues deal with ODT document, the open source document, contains a lot more page formatting that is not recognized by Microsoft Office. And if I'm using a Linux-based tool and sending an ODT document, but I'm installing, you know, I'm using Noto Sans as a font, for example, or Liberation Sans, well, Windows computers do not have those unless the people you are sharing documents have manually installed them. And so that is the case. That being said, the new version of LibreOffice 7.4 is coming with more improvements as we figure out more of the reverse engineering of the proprietary DocX format. They're able to put a lot of these functions in. And we're going to look at the release notes, the new features, and things like that. So thanks for making it through that long introduction. I am Tom Morosky, an author and a technology consultant. And here on Writing Done Right, we teach you how to do writing and authoring and production and publishing and all this kind of stuff tangential to you writing your books and getting them out there. My favorite tool for Office documents is LibreOffice. I absolutely love it. I run a NextCloud instance where I can use LibreOffice online. There are other open source and other free alternatives to Microsoft Office. If you are interested in seeing those, I have some videos about those. And who knows, maybe we need more. Let me know if you'd like me to highlight all of them that I can find. That might be a fun task. All right. But anyway, let's have a look at the uh, this first one, I believe, is just their blog post announcements. They talk about some of the latest functions and features. Um, they support the WebP image type. Um, this is a newer type of image that is starting to take over. Um, it has better compression and things, so you'll find them a lot on online. And uh, most things just didn't support it until most recently, and the new version of LibreOffice is now supporting WebP image files. Also, EMZ, WMZ files. I have no idea what those ones are. Um, we have script forge scripting libraries. Um, we have a search field for the extension manager. 
And, of course, some generic performance compatibility. We'll talk about those. As far as Writer itself, which is probably going to be most applicable to this channel, we have better cha uh, track changes. I talked about working with an editor and doing cha uh, track changes and things like that. And I'll do another one, actually. I'm going to do a video on editing a book with, um, like, do doing some final grammar checks and stuff with Pro Writing Aid, one of my affiliates, because uh, I have a book that is going through, uh, it's about to enter beta, uh, beta reading phase and so I'll talk about that kind of stuff we talked about working with an editor and they've increased the track changes particularly in the footnote area edited lists now show the original numbers and the change tracking so if you're doing change tracking review collaborations with LibreOffice and uh, you're doing edits on lists this is going to work now and uh, new typographic settings for hyphenation. Uh, the other thing that's not mentioned right here, we'll get into a little bit more detail. Uh, language tool is, uh, they've increased compatibility and added a, a backend API to make it easier to install language tool. And we've talked, I think we've talked about it on the channel. If not, guess what? We're going to do a video on that very soon. Uh, as far as calc, we now have support for 16,000 columns and spreadsheets, um, extra support for auto sum widgets and uh, new menu items to search for sheet names, and then new support for document themes and impress. <clears throat> they have some inter interoperability work over here. Um, distinctive features uh, for personal productivity uh, across desktop, mobile, and cloud. It provides a larger number of improvements and new features targeting at users sharing documents. So that is a good thing for all of us. And this is where they kind of are explaining what's going on here. LibreOffice offers the highest compatibility in Office Suite market segment, native support for ODF, uh, which be, uh, beats proprietary formats. And they kind of talk about what happened. Microsoft files are based on a proprietary format, depreciated by ISO and 2008. So basically what it means, means is in 2008, right around the time... Um, uh, which one was it? Office 2007 was coming out. They deviated from the open source standards that everybody agreed on and started creating their own uh, XML type document, which contains a lot of proprietary stuff and artificial complexity, which somehow still does not include formatting for pages and things like that, that we need to send things out to printers. Um, but LibreOffice does manage all these pretty well. There's some statements on uh, LibreOffice for enterprises and things like that. Um, this is just their, their basic, uh, discover new features. Not a lot on this page. They do have a video you can look at a two minute video, which is looking at the various features. Uh, so if you want to have a look over here, I'll link all three of these pages down below so you can find the video, the blog post, and most importantly, we're going to look at the release notes, which contains way more information than many people might want. This is the latest version, 7.4. You can go all the way back to 3.3 and see what all the release notes were uh, in order, and there are a variety of languages if English is not your primary language. So uh, this is basically... Um, all the details. So the writer, we have um, updating options, um, various improvements around tables and paragraphs to make them more word compatible. So tables and paragraphs, I like the way LibreOffice does, but if you make them more word compatible, uh, that's okay. Uh, hopefully this does not mess up with any of our formatting. I'll be able to test that when I get uh, 7.4 installed on my Arch system, which I always install these on an Arch Linux system to test them out in production before I put them on my full-fledged production computers, which I'm still using probably 7.1 or 7.2 on my production computers right now. I don't know. Let's see what version of LibreOffice is on this computer. This one's actually, I just rebuilt this computer not too, too long ago. So, um, oh, wow, we're still on six. Hmm, okay. <laughs> I think my other computers are using seven. I, I'm on seven on my actual writing computer. I don't use this computer for writing, so... Uh, not surprised. All right. Writer now supports clearing breaks from word improvement liabilities and better accessibility checks. Uh, in the read only, we have um, uh, better tra change tracks. And let's see. I want to get into the spot about um, see new typographic settings. I want to get into the spot about language tool. Okay, so here's actually the the bull, bulleting. Uh, we'll get down there in a second. This is the the new change in in how the new items work. So if I remember correctly, I think um, one of these columns is the first column is how it used to work, and now you can see that when we make the changes, it's going to 
give this a new number, but it tells you what the old number was. And so you can more easily see what's going on as you edit your um, your numbering systems. Language tool. We talked about language tool. Um, Microsoft Office, of course, has some built-in language uh, information. LibreOffice does not have it built in, um, but we do now have, we have a very nice open source tool called language tool. If I've talked about language tool, I'll go ahead and put it, uh, link the video to it here. Um, if I haven't, then I'll go ahead and do it very soon. Language tool is an open source alternative to like Grammarly and pro writing aid. Uh, you can install it directly on LibreOffice and allow language tool to function within it. Uh, on my current versions that I'm using, there are a few bugginess elements to it, um, which might be resolved if I upgrade to the latest versions, which is on my list to do sometime soon. Um, I usually upgrade options between books and I'm just about to finish a book. So we'll get that out. All right. Um, but with this, you can now install the grammar information and um, with this, it allows you to install it much quicker, enabling it through API settings um, and tying this to an account that you would have. Um, you do not have to have an account with Language Tool in order to use it, but it might improve things and uh, be able to track individual things about your particular use cases. So you can kind of see how this is going to work. Uh, so you'll see in this case, it's considered using third person verb forms. Um, instead, that's going to fix and find passive voice, uh, repeat words inside sentences, and a lot of other fun tools. I have found paid tools like Pro Writing Aid, one of our affiliates, does work a little bit better, uh, which is why I use um, Language Tool going through the document the first time, and then when I'm finally ready to export it out to the book, I'm going to run it chapter by chapter through my Pro Writing Aid account and uh, do any final adjustments from there. All right. Uh, on to Calc. Uh, this is actually exciting. Um, I do like some of the options that Excel had with uh, coloring bars and and things like that, which I don't know, may be involved in Calc. I, I used them when I was a teacher um, because I was able to set sums and put color codes, which showed me how the students' grades were averaging up based on color codes. You know, A's were green, um, A's and B's were green, C's and D's were yellow. I think C's were yellow, D's were orange, and reds were F. Uh, so I could very clearly see uh, next to the student's name what their score was. So this is the first time I've seen these. Maybe uh, LibreOffice has added functions like that, and I haven't seen them before. But now we actually officially have Sparkline support, giving us the ability to have a um, have a single column graph a line, uh, graph a bar, or even do some positives and negatives. So you can see three basic examples here of summing up these columns. So basically, the first one is going to be a line. So you see three, two is there. You can see here's the negatives uh, on up to the big positives. So that's what you're seeing here. This is represents the three. This quick fall represents the negative seven. This is your positive seven, your nine. Uh, you're up to your seven. You're down to your negative seven. So you're seeing a quick bar graph of this column. This one here does the same thing in a bar. <clears throat> and this one's giving us simply a positive and negative readout. So you can see how those new functions are working inside of Calc. Extra options, extra tools inside of here in order to see how things are working. Uh, under Impress and Draw, we have extra functions for um, for tools and stuff like that. No, no changes under Base, Chart, Math, uh, things like that. And then the Core and the general stuff, adding some extra uh, just extra things like that. So hopefully this will help you improve your game with running LibreOffice. I think these are all really good improvements. Uh, nothing that I have absolutely had to do, but things that I have liked to, uh, uh, it'll be neat to experiment with a little more in the future. Uh, so with that being said, uh, thanks for watching this one. Uh, have a look uh, at LibreOffice if you've not already done so. And if you've not upgraded, unless any of these are absolutely things that are completely necessary, I would say you wouldn't have to upgrade right right away. Um, just things to keep in mind for the future. Well, thanks for watching. If you have any other video ideas you'd like to see, let those know in the comments down below. I hope that this helped you to get your writing done right.